Hello and welcome back to Paloma Valley. It feels like I've been doing City Skyline stuff non-stop all week because I'm now on a three episode a week schedule. It's been a busy one, but I feel like I'm very prepared for today's episode with the amount of practice I've been doing in Calathea with city building. In today's episode, we're gonna be adding a metro system. I'm gonna be finishing a couple of the districts off, building on the other side of the river to the nature reserve, and possibly even starting the campus area today. While I've been doing this intro, we've actually maxed out the nature reserve park. So the first thing I'll do today is I'll go into the nature reserve and add in some of the new assets. Just as an aside, I did change the farming loop into a one-way loop. However, there is a new track up here that I've added in this bit along here because the trains sometimes go between cargo stations and to get from this station to this station, because I made it one way, they were having to come all the way down here around here and then back up again so i've just added this small piece of track up here to join these together and just this bit here is two-way everything else like this bit here and the rest of the loop is one way so trains won't be coming up through this way but they can get out both ways there and come in through that way there's a lot of unofficial route planning because you can't actually tell the cargo trains where to go but by doing this kind of like one way, two way thing with the angle of the junctions, you can kind of make them do certain things. So it's been working so far and all of the pieces are long enough for at least one train to sit in the middle. So they're not gonna be blocking any of the interchanges. The only thing that might potentially become an issue is if they have to cross over here to leave, which I'm sure is gonna happen at some point, but at this point it's kind of unavoidable. There's only so much you can do with these trains. Anyway, I've maxed out the nature reserve park now. I'm gonna go in and add the last few assets into the spaces that I've left for them and then our nature reserve will be complete. It looks like we've just unlocked a bouldering site and a nature reserve museum so I'm guessing this is going to be the biggest. Yeah that's quite big. I didn't realize how big this asset was going to be and I don't know if I've actually got space for it. Might have to put it in down here maybe. I think that's a big building but it just about fits on there. It's the only building along here that needs electricity and water. I did actually download some solar panels I'll probably chuck a few of those in. These solar panels fit in quite well in a nature reserve. It's all green energy, isn't it? So it's not going to be polluting or anything. And they don't give off much, but it's enough to keep this building going by the looks of it. So the other thing we've got is a bouldering site. I think I left this space empty for it here because it isn't that big. And oh, there's someone sitting up on that rock. That's cute. Oh, someone just fell off. Just added a few more tents down on this road here. And I think that is the last one that was pretty much completely empty. All the rest of them have already got things on them. So I think I'm gonna leave it and move on to other things. Although I have just noticed this huge stream of traffic coming in here. I did download some new park assets today, including some new car parks. So I'm just gonna add some of them into this front part to make it look a little bit nicer. Just added some new decorative car parks in here. They're a lot nicer than the ones that come with the game. They've got a lot more detail in them. I believe that most, if not all of these are from the same creator and you can kind of tell because they've got common themes throughout. That is a lot of people coming in here. A lot of people just dropping people off and doing a loop. So public transport is a must. So originally I was going to have the tram and metro station on this road here, but it's a four lane road, not a two lane road. So it makes this bit way too wide and it just messes up everything that I've already done over here. And then I was going to put it on this road here, but this junction is too wide for the station to actually be able to sit on it. So I think I'm now looking at this piece of road down here to put the station instead. It's still going to be easy for everyone to get to, but these two areas up here, neither of them are working. So I've just got to change tactic a little bit. So I'm going to stick the station in, in the middle of this road here. Okay, so I've added in this station. It does condense this road down from a two lane road to a one lane road. 
but hopefully that shouldn't be that much of an issue. This district doesn't actually have that much road traffic, so it should be okay. And there's not going to be a bus stop on this part of the road, so it's not like the bus is going to be stopping and clogging it up. I put a pavement filler in in the middle. It's a little bit odd having this massive gap here in the middle, so it's not exactly the same colour as the pavement on the roads, but it's the same colour as the pavement on the station, so hopefully that will do. So you can get into both sides of the metro station in the centre, but there's no line yet, so there's not going to be anyone going down there. There are a few people waiting at the station for the tram already, so that's good news. So having this station on this part of the road actually pretty much negates the need for a station over here unless we have a track going sideways. All of my forward thinking leaving a gap here for a stop actually wasn't necessary in the end because we've got one right here. So this metro line runs from kind of the northeast to the southwest and obviously we need to stop at the nature reserve so that's not necessarily going to be the best place to get to from there so we might need to add in an east-west station somewhere along here too but let me put in the nature reserve station and I will see where I think it would be best to go from there So I've added in a metro station on the right hand side of the car park and I've put one of these plazas either side, these are from the workshop and this metro station is from the workshop as well. It actually has a really deep track and I think we're going to need that to get underneath the river because I don't really want to cut straight through the middle of the nature reserve. So we're going to need to be deep, deep underground so the tracks aren't too steep and the trains can actually run. So looking at the train stations that we've got in so far, they're not going to be joined together. There's going to need to be a common station somewhere. Obviously the metro station over here is going to be fairly busy because of the train station that brings in tourists. We're going to need to get out this way and down this way as well. So that is obviously a lot of different tracks going all over the place. And I want it to be fairly easy to get from one place to another. I have quite an optimised underground system. So I'm going to put in a metro station where the train station is and see if that helps my thoughts come along any further. So I've kind of got a couple of options of what I could do here. I could go with a really grand station like this one with the glass roof or this one with the open bits. They're both from the workshop. This one is amazing. It's a real statement and I think it would work well as like the station that you see when you get off the train. And the same with this one over here where it's got these kind of two glass entrances, you can see the tracks underneath. And again, it's quite grand, but these tracks only go in one direction. However, this station here, again from the workshop, this has tracks that go out in two different directions and I actually have ones that go out in up to six, I think. Quite small stations, but they have quite a lot going on. So. I think I might go for one of these and then build it up a little bit more around it to make it look like it's nice and grand, but it's actually just a small little thing. Okay, so this isn't super fancy, but it will do for a small public transport plaza. I've added one of these kind of tropical plazas either side of the station, these are from the workshop, and then filled in the gap in the middle just to make it look like it's one continuous space, and I've added some tiles around it to make it look like the station's actually part of the park. There's already people using it to get from one side to the other, which is a great sign. And lots and lots and lots and lots of people coming out of the station, oh my god! This is gridlock. Oh, I didn't realize how bad this was. I need, to th I need them to stop getting out of the station and getting into cars because that is terrible. <laughs> There's cars driving through other cars and people are still trying to get out and they're not gonna be able to go anywhere. And there's a lot of people waiting for the bus stops as well. So let's get to building these lines in. Okay, so I've added the line in between the station and the reserve because I thought that was the easiest one to start with. 
I can see there's already some people waiting on this platform there, which is great. I've tried to make it the same colour pretty much as the bus shuttle that goes through. And this station works really well with it being so far underground. So the line has to get quite deep to get under this river. It's a little bit steep over here, but I've tried to even it out as much as I can. Now over here, I think I'm going to add a key along this bit here just to even out this terrain. And it's going to be one with steps so I can put some pathways down so they've got an easy route of travel from the main boulevard up to whatever station's going to be up here. When it comes to keys, I really haven't used them that much. I'm not sure if people will actually be able to get from these paths to the keys. Probably not, but I think it looks all right and it helps to flatten this land up up here. It doesn't leave any weird terrain bits and from the ground down here kind of adds that separation between the town and all of the touristy bits up at the top. This stop will be able to connect to the stop up here. And as you can see, there is a lot of traffic trying to come through this way. So hopefully putting in these stops will get rid of a lot of these cars. I've kept with the pink theme for this line and I've actually called this one the Barbie line just because of the pink bus route that goes through here. I doubt anyone is going to be using this straight away, it does take them a while to get used to having the tubes here. I really need to get power over to this station so I think now would be a good time to add the elementary school in down here and hopefully that will bring the grid across. So I've given the station its own solar panel just like with the nature reserve museum and I can see a lot of people going underground to use the station now so it looks like it is getting a lot busier which is what I like to see so they look like they're all walking out and going this way so next place we need a station is over here I said I wanted to do one of the larger stations over here because this is a big gap and I think it'd be nice to have something quite open here I think I'm gonna go with this one so let's link this up to the station we've just added in the other district. Okay, I had to make sure that this metro line didn't interfere with the train line that runs through here, so it had to go quite deep underground, um, just so it could go underneath that line there. But hopefully this should be quite useful for everyone who's trying to get down to this district for mostly the commercial I think there's a lot of people that seem to use this commercial zone hopefully it should give them an easier route to get here I love how because this station's really deep it takes the people a really long time to get out of it and it looks like they're walking up some sort of spiral staircase underground and then they get to the entrance here so I love that little little detail that you wouldn't really notice unless you were on this screen. And now we need to connect this station in Queen's Meadow up with the rest of them somehow. So I think it would make sense to have this line connected up here because a lot of people get on the bus to go over to this district and it will hopefully take some pressure off of that. But I think we could probably split the line out into two and have them going in different places so that, to get down to Pine Square as well. So let's connect this line up first. I might add another vehicle onto that line just because there's probably going to be a lot of increased traffic from Queen's Meadow now. So this public transport is starting to look really, really busy, which is which is good. It's good. The last district that needs a station is Pine Square. I've decided I'm not going to put a station down here because I will be removing this university at some point so that I can build the campus area so they're not competing for students. So this area will become all houses once I've got the campus area in. So I'm gonna leave the development of that until I can do the campus area. I think I wanna use one of these corners if I can because I really don't like how empty they are. This one back here seems like it'd be a good idea because people be able to get to it from all sides if I put some pathways in. And it's right near a tram stop and a bus stop. So I've added this little station in on the corner. I was only just about able to get it in and still connected to the road. And because it looked a little bit empty, I put some trees on a fountain out the back these are the same trees as in the kind of tree areas of this district so it should match 
There's some pathways underneath the pavement on here, although this one does clip a little bit, we're just going to ignore that. We will be able to get from the school and the kind of larger park area through to the station and vice versa. This district isn't exactly how I want it to look, it's not ideal. There was a lot of kind of compromise in this district, so I will be going through and giving it a big refresh at some point, but not in today's episode, I've got bigger things to focus on. So let's join this station up to the rest of the track. Made this line purple, just like the bus route. So I doubt anyone will be using this line really. I've noticed that the bus stop here has become a lot quieter since adding in this metro and tram stop. So it looks like it's doing what I wanted it to do already. This one down here was also super, super busy and there's hardly anyone waiting there now, which is fine. I can probably reduce the service down now as well. So there's not so many vehicles on the road. Uh oh. Oh, I didn't think of this. Oops, uh, I think I need to give them a little bit more space to join the tracks together because that's not gonna work. Oh, I screwed myself over. All right, let's remove that track there and join it further back here. Instead, it's not ideal that they're gonna be crossing over, but I don't really know what else to do. That train is probably just gonna sit there for a while now and be totally in the way. But let's reduce this bus down now because there aren't as many people using it. We might be able to reduce it even further. And then the hotel shuttle, again, we can reduce this all the way down to about three, I reckon. Nowhere near as many people using it now. So now that we've got our public transport in and it seems to be doing okay, let's focus on filling these gaps down here. definitely helped to fill in these gaps. This whole bit was empty a moment ago and now it is filled with houses, pathways and trees. My favourite things to fill the gap with. Kind of now just blends into the city park. That's that space filled in nicely and the metro system is done. And so now I'm going to move on to this district over here. It is completely empty at the moment other than the train line that already existed on the map and this one road that we put through just to join up to the nature reserve. The first thing I'm gonna do in this district is I'm going to put in a train station and I'm gonna kind of center everything around this train station and have it all coming off of that. So I'm actually gonna do a split in the track for this train station so that I can use a smaller one without a bypass lane. I was thinking of having the trains raised through this district as well and having the roads go underneath them. So I think I might do that from this point here and have them raised all the way through, including this station here, because the raised stations are actually going to be useful for this. So now that that's on a raised track, they're not going to get in the way of anything. And I can put my station in on this road here. So I'm going to go with one of the content creator stations. And I think I'm going to go with the elevated island platform train station because it's got a really nice parking lot out the front. So let's see if this fits. Oh, wow. It just about fits in this gap here. I'm actually going to move the whole road back because I can't get into that station at that angle coming off of the track here. So let me move this until it's roughly in line with that track there. I'm not a fan of the two intersections there, so I am going to remove this road and join it up to this intersection just because I hate having two intersections so close together. I will probably change that in the future because there's a lot going on there. 
So let's join these tracks up to the station. I'm going to redraw this side of the connection just so it's got enough room to get into the station here. I'm just going to use the network multi-tool to make sure that that's a proper nice slope. That's better there. And so I'm not sure whether to have this one as an intercity train or not. It would make sense because the trains are already going through here, but I know that it can cause problems when you have too many intercity trains stopping within a city. If anything, it would make more sense to have this one as the intercity one and the one up there as just a regular train. But I'm going to leave it on for now, and I guess if it causes problems further down the line, I can always change it. Just press play, and a cargo train has immediately gone through here for no reason, and another one's doing the same. So let me stop cargo trains from coming down this way. Do the same on this side. I don't know why the cargo trains felt like they needed to come through that way. Maybe it's because it's on that side of the track and it's the primary route through there. I don't know. Hopefully they'll stop doing that now. And what I was going to do was I was going to have a bus stop on this road here for the train station. I will change this eventually and have this in a different place but for now so that people can get to the train station I'm just going to chuck one in there and then on this side of the road as well. So let's have a look at the tube lines now that they've been running for a while. The Barbie line has 505 weekly passengers and there's 398 people waiting at that stop. Oh my god. Okay we're gonna need to change the vehicle to a higher capacity one otherwise they're just gonna be waiting there forever. So if there's 300 waiting at this stop and 147 waiting at this stop that means that by the time they get to this one it's gonna be almost full with this so Let's have a look as this train comes through. It will come through to a stop with 200 and then 145 and then 417. So it's gonna be pretty full by the time it gets down here. So that one's moving down to this stop. It's gonna pick up all those people. It's now more than half full. Getting down to this stop and it's now nearly completely full. And yep, that is now completely full. So hopefully the one behind it will be able to pick up some of the remaining passengers. Lovely. Okay, that works quite well. I wonder if it's affected the bus lines in any way, having the tubes running. What? How does this bus now have so many people waiting for it? 269 people waiting at that bus. I just reduced the amount of buses going around. Where are they even going? Going up to the train station. Just walk. It's not that far away. Might have to up the amount of people again. That's a lot of people waiting for that bus and they're never going to fit on one. Castlemead shuttle now has only two people on it, so let's reduce that down to one vehicle. Trams seem to have more people on them now. Whoa! Putting this station in here actually really helped to boost the numbers a bit. So maybe we need to put in some more trams because they have a capacity of 90. Okay, the tram is coming along here now. I can see it in the distance. So let's see how many of these people it actually picks up. Nearly 500 people waiting at that tram stop, probably having got off the metro, I reckon. Hopefully that will help a little bit. I didn't realize how many people were waiting at that station. So anyway, let's get back to this district and put in some temporary electricity for now. I'm going to put in one of these solar panel farms just to give it enough electricity for now. I think it gives it more than it needs, but we are actually struggling. We're kind of on the edge of the yellow at times for electricity. So we're going to need to look at adding some more in this district somewhere because the existing grid is not going to be able to handle it. Okay, so like I mentioned in the last episode, I already have a road plan drawn out for this district. I probably won't follow it to a T. I think I'm going to be a little bit more mindful about placing houses in this one rather than just zoning them all in. I might plop some as well. So I've got some great assets that I've got from the workshop that I want to use and they're really, really pretty. So I don't want to just save them all for Calathea. I want to use some of them on this one as well. I will be back in a moment.
So I've added in a little apartment complex back here. It's probably the only thing I'm gonna do in this district today that is plopped rather than just sewn in because it is very, very time consuming. But these assets are from the workshop. I've been using builds from this creator in my Calathea series. The last episode was uploaded on Tuesday. I use some high density housing from the same collection and they're really, really gorgeous buildings, so detailed and I wouldn't mind living here myself. So this park was from a different creator, but I tried using the flats that go with it, but I just couldn't get them to look right. So I've decided to go with these buildings instead and made a tiny, very sad little plaza out the back. These buildings have all zoned in now and they have brought the electricity grid across, which is great news. That's the first bit of high rise in. I think I'm gonna do some more high density over here. I'm trying to remember to add in parks as I go. This is actually a car park, but the trees are quite nice and, and you can get to it from either side. So they can either use it to park or they can use it just to go and sit in. We need to get up to 15,000 residents today, which isn't gonna to be too difficult, especially not with these high density flats. But I wanna add in a little bit of commercial as well, just because it's gonna be very resident heavy over here. And if they're needing to go to work, we're needing to go to the shop, they're gonna to have to go all the way over there, which isn't gonna be ideal. So I'm gonna add a small amount of commercial down here. And I am going to plop it, even though I just said I wasn't going to. It's because there's some really gorgeous assets from that creator that I was talking about a moment ago, who did a lot of very similar buildings and they are just really pretty. So I want to use this opportunity to use a few of these. Like I said, I'm not going to do too much. I just want to use all these pretty things. I use this as an opportunity to put fire and a police station in. These are from the same creator and they're not the exact same style as the rest of the buildings. These are much more modern and sleek, but they desperately needed fire and police cover over here. So they are district buildings, so they will cover a huge area. So as this area grows, they will hopefully have enough coverage. So I need to add some schools back here because the elementary school levels are getting dangerously close. We actually only have 17 available spaces at the elementary school at the moment and not that many more at the high school. So let's add some schools into here as well. I recently downloaded loads of new stuff from the workshop to use in Calathea, but I will be using some of them in this one as well, just because there are some very cool looking assets. I think I'm gonna stick with the style of the fire and police and go with one that is a brick building. A grand looking building and then I'm going to put a sports thing of some sort around the back like I always do. I think that looks good. That backs onto the school quite nicely and it's a nice square block. Okay, that will be good for now and that fills in that space really nicely. In preparation for more houses, I'm gonna put the elementary school over here feels a little bit weird just putting it out on this spit at the moment but there will be other stuff around it so it won't be on its own for too long. I think I'm going to go with this primary school from the workshop. It has a slightly higher capacity than the others so I'll put the elementary school on this corner and there's always a few parks around it for the kids. I'm going to use this park here I'm going to just swap these over quickly so we can kind of get it to line up there will be a line across there obviously where the two different terrains meet but that isn't too bad actually add some parking down this side because it's a really easy way to raise the land value um, maybe not that one it doesn't really face the right way any better yeah that one looks all right that kind of fits with the grass going down the edge of the road there i'm gonna put a small fence down the back of this just to block it off from everything else there we go so that's the start of this district it's obviously going to take a while for me to build it all because starting from scratch to build a brand new place takes a long time but they seem to be doing okay Got more than a thousand residents already which is really great and they've got all of the services that they need over there i think so let's have a quick look back at our transport see how they're doing looks like a lot of people are getting on and off the buses here so let's look at them first also mean shuttle reserve is the one that comes through here and jesus christ keep putting the capacity up and down on this bus. Let's add a metro station over here because I reckon a lot of people are using this to get into the town. So that station is coming in this way. So let's add it over here. 
and it needs to be one that goes through like that one. Let's join this up and hopefully that will help the strain on that bus. So now instead of all rushing to get onto the bus there, they can go to the metro instead. Obviously it's going to take a while for them to realise that it's there, but we'll check back in on that in a moment. So let's look at the other bus lines. Let's just call this the lilac line for now because I keep calling it that anyway. That isn't doing too badly apart from that one stop where there's 104 people. Why is this one so busy? I don't get it. I don't get why this one specifically is ridiculously busy when there's a tube station over there. Very strange. The hotel shuttle, let's have a look at this. I'm kind of scared at this point. Look at them. Oh my god! 235 people! There is a tube right behind you. You can get on the tube and you can go to the same place. I'm just gonna leave it underfunded for now and hopefully they will change their ways. The tram was really busy last time we looked at it and it's still pretty busy but not as busy as it was. And the metros, the Barbie line, 767 people. That is the quickest I've ever got that many people using a metro before. The Castle Mead Nature Reserve line, again, that's a huge amount of people. So many people waiting on that stop. I think we might need to boost the capacity of this one as well. So let's put this up to the 500 capacity one too, just because it's a lot of people on that stop and it's only going to get busier. The last one is the Metro Line 3 and there is no one waiting. What a surprise, no one wants to come to this district. And people are about to get off of this train and no one waiting to get back on it. It's kind of sad that I built this district and no one wants to come here, but a lot of people want to get out of here by the looks of it. A huge amount of people waiting on that stop there. Check back in Strawberry Flats. I'm sure there's a lot of people using this station. Yeah, I like this one because you can see down into it and you can see all the little people running about when they get on and off the train. I actually forgot that I need to add a police station in, in this district because they don't have one. Well, they had a tiny one back here, but it wasn't a proper one by any means. So I downloaded a load more police stations that are a lot nicer than the ones that came with the game. I really don't like the vanilla police station. I might add in the same police station that I did in the other district just to keep a little bit of consistency. I wonder if down here for now might be a good idea just to keep it out of the way until I have somewhere proper to put it. I'm gonna put a little bit more housing into this district and then leave it for now and move on to the campus area. And I'll come back to this district next episode and do a little bit more work on it. just added in a little bit more high density residential and this high density commercial block down here as well this is a modular piece and these pieces fit really nicely together it has quite a grand frontage to it so because it was kind of encroaching onto the high school area I changed this from a football field to a parking lot instead one of these parking lots that actually looks like a plaza. So, I mean, the, the high school now doesn't have a sports ground, but it is completely surrounded by entertainment. So I'm not too worried about losing a sports ground. I can put in a large sports area somewhere else. So now that this area is kind of running on its own, it has enough services to be getting on with and transport. I'm going to leave them to it for a minute and I'm going to move back over to Strawberry Flats to start off the campus area. I already mapped this out in a previous episode so we've got the starting blocks and they already have transport here ready so hopefully once I build it it will be nice and busy. I've never been able to level up a campus area, I've always been pretty bad at it so hopefully this will be a nice change. So I've just realised that this bit here is just slightly too wide for this building. <laughs> All of that planning and I'm going to have to bulldoze these roads. Let's try and put that as central as possible on here. I guess that is quite a grand building looking across there, isn't it? 
and opposite the oppression office actually looks pretty good. I'm very good at doing campuses. I don't really know what to do with them. I don't really know what to put in and what they need. So I'm just kind of guessing really about what's gonna be good to use in this space. So if I'm doing something really, really wrong, then please let me know because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna be plopping buildings down and hoping for the best really. I just did a campus build in Calathea and honestly even having everything unlocked I still had no idea what I was doing with it. I do think these little book club buildings are very very cute. Put a little one here in the middle of this bit just so it's not too heavy on that side. Now that I've got that in I'm going to remove this university. People are going to be sad but they can come to university over here and to be honest I don't know the difference between a university building and a campus area. Like, is it the same as the industry where it fills the need or do they need multiple different types? I don't know. So I'm just hoping by demolishing that building, everyone's now going to move over to this university instead. It looks like they actually did. So that's good. There's a lot more students. Oh, wow, that's really, really going up fast. Let's actually boost the academic staff. I've got a lot of money. So I think I can afford to do about 6,000 and I'm also going to give them a grant for IT and engineering. Let's just do that. Oh my god, I almost have enough students already. How is that even possible? There wasn't even this many at the university that I just demolished. I've never done this before. Oh my god, I need to get the attractiveness up. Will adding trees help? Do I need to add a park? I've never had this issue before. It's always been the other way around. I, I'm a bit flustered now. I don't really know what to do. Let's add some of these parking lots that look like parks because they're always a good idea. That didn't help at all. What am I supposed to do? So parks obviously aren't working. Should I add a lake? Do I need to add a rock formation? Is that going to help? No. What do I need to do? Wait, why does that have a capacity of 450, but we need 500 students? How is that possible? Do I need more buildings? You couldn't tell. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Oh, student capacity 400. Maybe if I add some dorms, that will help. I was going to put the dorms back here, wasn't I? So let's have a look. Okay, that has boosted the capacity. I was thinking that was going to be actually impossible to get up to that point because it wasn't enough capacity. So that's boosted the attractiveness a little bit, but I need to do it more. So what else can I do? Add groundskeeping. It increases campus attractiveness and land value. Perfect. Okay, that's what I need. Maybe I'll just plop it down there for now and I'll move it later on. Okay, so that's done a little bit more. So do campus buildings, are they the only ones that count towards campus attractiveness? Maybe if I had a pathway, has that done anything? No. So parks don't do anything, pathways don't do anything, rocks don't do anything. Just buildings then. Book club has 50 of 50 slots filled, so maybe they need more book clubs. Yay! Oh, that hit it. Campus attractiveness, 225. But now I need to just wait for some more students to come in. I'm nearly at the next milestone actually, so maybe that will help me once I hit that. If this car park isn't actually helping towards the attractiveness level, I think I'm going to remove it because I want these two bits to be empty so I can decide to do something with them later. But I might add a car park in down here instead to fill this gap. I'll go with a super long one and maybe I can do something out the back here that will just kind of hide that concrete bit. Uh, okay, so let's just ignore that hernia of concrete up there. So there's car parking there for people who need it now. It's got a little toilet thing at the back as well, which is quite cute. That's one thing that this district was really lacking so far actually is parking. Just realised there's like no parking in this entire district. Maybe I will do a car park out this side and just keep it out the way. car park is kind of nicely hidden around the back of that bit so if you're looking from this angle you can't see it at all perfect how do i get more people in can i give them free lunch you know what i'm feeling nice i'll give them both of them but let's just leave that to do its thing and get more students in we need to put some more houses in anyway hopefully that'll bring some more people into the city and they can go to the campus too 
So actually, what I should do while I'm waiting for the campus to build up is finish off this Pine Square district. I'm actually just going to remove this whole bit here because it doesn't need to fit into such a tiny little gap now. So let's just remove all of those houses. They will remove themselves in time and that little park there. Oh, they're all sad. I would be more sad that you just lost the road outside the front of your house rather than a dog park. I'm actually going to remove this commercial as well because they don't need to be there anymore. There's no university down here. There's no point in having these silly little buildings that look really weird together. This can just be housing down here now. They've got some more houses now and hopefully that will help us get up to that next milestone. Not far off now. Kind of means that this whole bit is now pretty much full apart from this tiny little bit here which I'm going to leave empty for something that I might decide on in the future. We'll find out when I have a brainwave I guess. The campus has lost like 50 students. How? I gave them healthcare, I gave them free lunch and now they're leaving? Did they come for the lunch and then go? Oh that's really rude. I should probably work on adding some more hotels in actually because I haven't added any of them in a really long time. I did the cabins up on the hill here and then nothing else. So maybe I should add something in but I feel like none of these really go with the vibe of this city. Ah yes amazing. Oh, I get crematoriums now yay. I'm gonna need that floating garbage collector. The river is getting really really dirty with the sewage water. We haven't unlocked the eco water treatment plant yet so we're gonna need a bunch of them in the river to stop it from being so stinky. But yay great that's amazing. Anyway back to hotels. I feel like I should add a hotel in somewhere because we've kind of just been stagnant at this profit level and we need 5,000 weekly income to reach the next level. We're never gonna get up there, never gonna unlock the other things. So I should probably add some in just to have that working in the background. I'll put a hotel in down here. Oh, that's an ugly color. I don't like that. It's got maxed out on all of the requirements apart from business though. It's just got 1%, I don't even know what that would be. It's making a profit already though, which is good. The guest number is just flying up. I guess people want to be near the shopping malls. Maybe I'll dot a few more around and hopefully they can be running in the background so I can unlock all the other hotels. So I'm going to add in another one down here and kind of try and put it on this corner. That is about as good as I'm going to get, although that tree is clipping into that shop. Actually, you know what? Let's just remove these shops from down here because they looked really bad anyway. Let's put the hotel here instead. I wish you could like mirror these objects so that they uh, sat better together. How many people have they got? 60, 58, 60. That's pretty good. And it's boosted the profits up a little bit. Maybe we need another hotel down here. I guess that'll be good for the shoppers. They probably want hotels. I'll just chuck a few down here just to get the money up and I'll probably delete them in the future and add nicer ones in. But at the moment, I just need to get the profits up. How on earth is this zero on sightseeing location when they're literally on a river? Parks and unique buildings. Oh, I guess there's not very many parks over here. Maybe I should move these around here and hopefully they'll have a little bit more. Oh, sightseeing up to 100% now. Oh, I'll put the price back up then. I was just having a look at my public transport screens to see if I need to increase or reduce any of the services and I've noticed that the tram line is saving 75% of car trips, which is really, really good. I did once get it to 100 on my Parks and Rec build. And I don't think I'll ever see it again because that was a long way in. That was like once I'd hit Megopolis, but I'm quite happy that that's 75. It was 18 minute ago, but it's 75 and that's still very, very good. It's saving that many car trips. 
the metro though might be a different story 670 people wow 56 percent of car trips that's not bad not as many people using this line as there was earlier though which is a little bit confusing the nature reserve line oh my god 647 people at that stop whoa 100 percent 100 percent of car trips yes this metro line saves a hundred percent of car trips that's what we want to see i want to get all my lines to say that that's going to be impossible but i'm going to try very impressed with that that's a lot of people at one stop 768 people i wonder if you get more than a thousand people waiting at a stop that would be insane there's more than a thousand people waiting at that stop where even is the tube? Is that why there's so many people waiting? Because the tubes aren't actually running. Oh no, I'm going to have to change the vehicle type to get them to start working again. Let's put it on this one instead. There's just been a train come in. That's fixed it for now. Oh my god, I've leveled up on my campus as well. No, I haven't. Oh, I got all excited for a minute there. This looks like a level up report, doesn't it? Reputation level achieved, unrecognized. Previous year, unrecognized that's rough man really hoping i was going to be able to do that okay let's stop looking at how many people are waiting at that tube the metro line three has zero people on it. it only goes between two districts but the fact that there's no one using that one actually makes me really sad i think this stop might just be broken because i removed this stop ages ago and there's still loads of people waiting there the bus stop is still there but there's no bus line that goes through and yet people still waiting i'm sure they'll be there forever now just realized we leveled up on the city park as well and i didn't do anything about it so i'm gonna very very quickly add in some of the new things that we unlock hopefully that will get us over into the next level because i didn't even realize that um we were on this one. Oh, there we go that was quick now we get a climbing frame yay just gonna add a few more of these pergola things i'm actually gonna move this one that i just put in because the climbing frame would fit better there that might just put me over into level five actually because we've had enough visitors i just need to put like one more thing down and it will be like completely leveled up there we go trampoline park now let's just add that in for the fun of it mm, put it over here great so we've got a five star city park a five star nature reserve five star farming five star forestry and a one star campus so the last thing i'm going to do today is i'm going to add a crematorium these buildings are a really stupid city shape so goodbye buildings and now there is a crematorium here doesn't actually really fit with this district at all but it is what it is just before i sign off for the day i wanted to point out that this roundabout actually has like no traffic on it now and i'm really really surprised about that because it was so bad the last few episodes i was kind of just ignoring it and i know that i've had a lot of comments with tips on how to fix roundabouts and how to make them work better some people are suggesting using tmp some people are suggesting using just yield signs traffic lights time traffic lights all sorts of different things but actually it's fixed itself on its own i mean i have still got the time traffic lights and the lane rules on here but there are so many fewer people traveling around this roundabout i think it's partially having the cargo train for the industry areas having public transport for people to get around i mean as i'm saying this the road is getting pretty backed up towards the top of the screen but it wasn't backed up a minute ago and i think that's what's important so i really appreciate everyone's comments especially when it's something that i'm not very good at but i think from my experience with this game the trick to doing anything is just to keep an eye on it and to keep changing it and keep fiddling with it based on what the demand is and what the issues are in that moment because there isn't a one size fits all fix. So throughout the course of this episode, I've increased and decreased the bus, tram and metro capacity and amount of vehicles that they're sending out literally 10 times because one minute they want it and the next minute they don't. So you're never going to be able to fix something perfectly and slap a band-aid on it and call it a day because population will fluctuate, the needs will fluctuate, the travel patterns will fluctuate. One thing that works at one point isn't going to work in the future. So this roundabout wasn't working before. It was really empty a few minutes ago and now it's really busy again. So I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself to try and fix everything straight away. So I think this is a good place to end today's episode. It doesn't really look like I've done a lot, but I feel like I've done a lot. Started the campus area, added some hotels, started this district on the right over here, added in a metro system, put loads of plazas, maxed out the city park, and finished off the two more suburban districts. I haven't touched any of the industry today. 
and I barely added any commercial either. So I'm sure that's going to be the two things they're wanting in the next episode. And speaking of which, next episode I'm going to be building more of this new district because it looks very empty and sad at the moment. And I'm also going to decide which tile to buy. I did unlock a new tile when I just hit the big city milestone, but I haven't decided yet which one I'm going to buy. And it's a really important decision because it's my last one for a long time. So these are the tiles that I currently have available to buy with the most recent milestone. And I have an idea of which one I might want to buy, but I haven't completely made my mind up yet. And I'm going to decide in the next episode. So if you've got any suggestions, please throw them my way. I'm very intrigued to hear which one you think I should buy and why. You need to give me a good reason though. I'm not just going to blindly follow what people say. I want to hear a good argument. Don't forget to check out my Tropical City Build series, Calathea. I'm doing two episodes a week on that series because I want to get it finished by the end of October. I just built a huge old town with loads of mansions and a liberal arts campus area. It was a massive, massive build and it took four and a half hours to do of just solid building but it looked really really good in the end those videos aren't getting anywhere near as many views as this series is which i'm kind of sad about i know it's a slightly different episode style with more time lapse building than talking but i really enjoy doing it i feel like i'm doing a lot better with find it and doing asset plopping and i've got loads of really cool stuff for that series so please check it out if you want to see more of my content so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.